Hello and welcome to the Thursday, March 19th, 2020 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Today we got a critical update from Trend Micro to start out with. It does affect Apex One as well as Office Scan XG. And at least two of the vulnerabilities are already actively being exploited. Now there are a total of five vulnerabilities that are being addressed in this update. The two that are already actively being exploited are rated as critical with a CVSS score of 9.1 and 8.0. However, the reason they don't get the full score of 10 is in part because they do require some user authentication, but do, once the user is authenticated, allow remote code execution. The remaining three vulnerabilities actually have the CVSS score of a full 10, so no authentication required, gaining system privileges, and all of that remotely, but no active exploitation of these remaining three vulnerabilities yet. So this is certainly an update that you do want to apply quickly not sure how long it will take until we see an exploit for these other three vulnerabilities which actually appear to be more severe i'm not exactly sure if uh, this is a good or a bad thing but trend micro points out that uh, these products are basically the server the back end part of uh, their anti-malware products and as such you really shouldn't expose them to the open network. So that would make exploitation a bit more difficult. And then we got another update from VMware. It's addressing two vulnerabilities, one of which is only affecting the Mac version. So that's Fusion VMRC for Mac and Horizon Client for Mac. And it does make the Mac, so the host, vulnerable to privilege escalation. What makes it so interesting kind of is that this is a very trivial to exploit vulnerability. And there is already a public proof of concept exploit out there. Actually, it's kind of more than a proof of concept because it just exploits it. The root cause here is that we do have a SUID root binary. So a binary that runs as root that the user essentially can just replace with a heart link and with that execute arbitrary code. The second vulnerability is a denial of service vulnerability in the Cortado ThinPrint uh, component. And uh, this one does affect Windows and Linux. It's affecting Workstation and Horizon Client for Windows. This uh, entire print system in VMware has caused issues in the past. If you don't need any printing on your virtual machines, then it may be advisable just to turn this off. And IBM's x has an interesting malware write-up. And now, initially, the malware looks like, well, so many pieces of malware that we have talked about in the past. It uh, starts out with a Word document that's a phishing lure. Now, this uh, targets uh, Arab-speaking countries, and the content of the email claims to be a presidential announcement. If uh, the user opens the document, then we have uh, the usual in this case, password protected, macro running. Now, um, what's sort of a little bit interesting here is that they actually use a commercial tool to obfuscate the malware Enigma Protector. These tools are often used by commercial software companies in order to sort of make reverse engineering more uh, difficult. So no surprise that someone would use a tool like this to make reverse engineering malware more difficult. But where it gets really sort of interesting is the command and control channel. The command and control channel uses HTTP. It connects to a very specific host, but then as host header sends cnet.com. So a little bit like domain fronting, but it's not domain fronting. I don't think they're using any proxies or so here. They just make it a little bit more difficult to figure out where is the request going. cnet.com, of course, a very legitimate uh, and popular news website. 
And FireEye put together some interesting statistics about recent trends with uh, ransomware. Now, they still observe a lot of phishing, a lot of RDP still being used uh, to deploy ransomware as well as drive-by downloads. And actually, I have not seen a lot of these drive-by downloads myself personally lately. Now, once you are infected with the ransomware, you got about three days, about three days after you are infected and the encryption activity is happening and in 76% of the cases the ransomware starts its work its work after business hours now given that a normal workday is sort of 8 hours uh, Statistically speaking, if they would just do it randomly, so 66% would be off hours, 76%, not really all that significant that it's actually running after hours. But I can see where this is uh, advantageous for the ransomware because the longer it takes to be discovered, uh, the harder it gets to actually recover from it. Well, and this is it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.